Welcome back to the Paddle Sports Lifestyle. My name is Kim Peek, and I am so glad you're here. I'm still having a hard time winding down from the MR340. I really just enjoyed the training and the people I trained with and the excitement leading up to the event. And I'm just ready to accept that it's over until 2024 when we get to do it all over again. I am glad for the mental break. And maybe that's because I had such a steep learning curve. But this race really took up a lot of mental space for me. Besides work and my children, I really didn't have a lot of time to spread my attention too far beyond kayaking for the last few months, which also meant that I neglected my typical fitness routine, which is really biting me right now. About the time I started hitting the water hard in May, I backed way down on running and cycling. And overall, I think I lost fitness, which is something I will definitely work harder on next year. Just having more of a well-rounded triathlon type of focus where kayaking is not the only activity I'm doing. Maybe doing a better job of alternating the activities or even doing some days where I kayak and weight train, kayak and run which I did a little bit of at the beginning of the season, but then as things got more intense, I just dropped that whole thing. Anyway, the topic for today is the words we use and the mindset. And one thing I've thought a lot about is how we manage our mindsets because everyone in our training group had some kind of experience with endurance sports, which meant that we all shared a similar mindset when it came to hard work, resilience, and pushing through when things got tough. We had in our group cyclists, marathoners, triathletes, swimmers, and hikers, and everyone came at the MR340 knowing that this was both a mental and a physical event. And I don't think you have to have the experience to be successful at the MR340, but it was definitely a factor when you threw in this group that I trained with where most of us had none or very little kayaking experience before we started getting on the river this spring. Also, in most years, I'd argue that the mental component exceeds the physical one, but for 2023, that was truly unique, and physical was every bit as important combined with that mental toughness. Going into race week, we knew that we had the right physical and mental skills to make it through. We knew we put in the work and that we were prepared both physically and mentally. We started out with the mindset that the only way we were going to quit was if we were forced off the course. And that's exactly what happened when the race was cut short due to the dangerous conditions. And I've told other people this, that I'm really glad that they made the decision for us because there was no way I was stopping unless I could truly see that it was dangerous or in this case somebody told us that it really, really was too dangerous and that decision was made for us. In the last episode, I talked about some of the things Tim and I did when the conditions got tough. We both agree that having a partner made it less boring. And although we were in our own kayaks, we still paddled together. Sometimes we needed to dig deep inside. I think probably me more than him. And although I tend to talk a lot, sometimes... Talking took a lot of energy that I needed to go inside and find that energy so that I could focus on pushing through that wind and the rain. But I also loved that by committing to stay together, it made the MR340 feel more like a team endeavor. And that helped break up the monotony when things get boring. And I know that probably seems weird. Why would you get in a boat to paddle 85, 86 hours or whatever the cutoff actually is for four days basically. Why would you get in the boat to do that when you know that there are a lot of chunks that it is boring? And I think I did an episode about that a couple episodes ago but it does get boring and that's okay. That's just part of what you have to accept. And anyway, so I liked that I had him with me so that it was a lot less boring and it was a lot more fun this way for me. In the last episode, I also shared some of the things that we use to keep ourselves going. For example, instead of playing music the entire race, we pulled up a power song when we needed a boost. I mentioned previously that Mr. Blue Sky was what started this on the second day. 
And after some banter where I said the skies ahead were blue and Tim looked at them and saw them as storm clouds, somehow Mr. Blue Sky popped in our heads. I think it was the paddler that was going past us who had said something about nothing but blue skies are ahead. And that song popped into my head and all of a sudden I wanted to listen to it. So this song is another one of the songs that I realized I don't actually know the lyrics to. I just love the song. So the other day I wondered, what is he singing? And is it actually a happy song? And when I Googled it, I was surprised to see that Mr. Blue Sky is considered the happiest song in the world, which now also completely makes sense to me because every time I hear of a song, it gives me energy and puts a smile on my face, makes me want to get up and dance or just put a little bit of extra pep in my step. And according to the website Songtell, the song is ultimately a reminder to find hope in difficult times and that no matter what we go through, the blue sky will always be waiting for us. And given that explanation, I think the song was perfect for that first break in the storm, that brief, very brief break on the second day of the MR340 where it just felt good and filled me with hope. So I kind of loved what I learned about that song and thought I would share that with you. Another thing that we used when we wanted to give up was food. I had this idea that I wanted to try for the MR340. Now, you've probably heard of the placebo effect, which the dictionary defines as a substance that has no therapeutic effect used as a control in testing new drugs. Have you heard, though, of the open-label placebo before? Now, I remember hearing this several years ago as I was writing my book, Holistic Endurance Training, which is a book that has a running and triathlon focus. And as I was driving a few weeks before the MR340, I suddenly remembered this study. I don't know what I was listening to, but something made me think of this study. And so I had to go look it up again because I couldn't remember exactly how or why it worked. And then after reading about it again, it suddenly caused me to get very excited about open label placebos all over again. An open label placebo is a placebo without deception. In other words, the person taking the placebo knows they are taking a substance that has no proven therapeutic effect. And it actually helps doctors and scientists avoid that weird ethical issue where you're deceiving your patient or the study participant. And open label placebos actually work best on symptoms like pain and being tired. And when I read this, I thought, this is perfect for the MR340. These are two of the biggest things that we are going to encounter. So I got busy making up these little pill bottles with power boosting pills, which were actually jelly bellies. And my plan was that we would take two of these pills anytime we needed an extra boost. Unfortunately, I didn't plan well for this, and my pill bottles were out of reach when we really wanted them. But Tim had some Cliff Blocks energy chews handy, and so we started taking them when things felt hopeless or hard. For me, I felt a boost about 15 to 30 minutes after each time we took the Cliff Blocks. So I started looking at the energy chews as our power pills. Now, they are designed to have this effect, of course, that's why endurance athletes take them. But we had also been eating and drinking regularly throughout the race. So I don't think that the energy chews and what they're designed for, the carbs or the sugars in them, I don't think it was solely the effect of that blast of carbs that turned things around for me. But at any rate, whatever the cause, the energy chews gave me a second wind and a better attitude each time we used them. And I'll link some of these studies in the show notes because I think it's really interesting. And who knows, you might be able to find some ways to use this concept in your own life. Now, I also read that open label placebo does not work on things like cancer or an actual disease, but it works on things like pain and how tired you are, things that are more subjective. So keep that in mind if you decide you're going to try this. To break up the monotony of paddling over 18 hours a day, we also talked and sang and asked each other, would you rather questions. We did things like, would you rather be in a relationship where you were loved or one where you were respected? You can't have both. Which is it going to be, love or respect? Or the old utilitarian response question, a trolley veers off the tracks. It's headed toward a large group of people. You can pull a lever and send it down another track, but at the end of the track is your child. Which lever do you pull? 
Or one of us would come up with a lineup of celebrities and ask the other one which celebrity they would sleep with, marry, or ditch. That was just kind of fun, some of the things we did to break up the monotony. But the biggest thing I wanted to cover today was the power of language. Because throughout our training, we kept an eye on the language we used to frame challenges and talk about the experience. Language plays a crucial role in our perception of experiences and outcomes. As endurance athletes, we already knew that by choosing positive and empowering words, we have the ability to impact our experience, not just with the MR340, but with all of life's trials. Instead of viewing our experience in the wind and rain as struggling, we work to frame it as a challenge to be overcome. Along the same lines, the phrase, I can't do this, could become, I'm finding this challenging. The slight change in phrase, in words that we choose, acknowledges the difficulty, but it's also a reminder that you're in a temporary situation that can be overcome. Other phrases that can be empowering are things like replacing the phrase, I have to, with I get to. Instead of saying, I have to paddle another mile, say, I get to paddle another mile. And I know that might seem cheesy, but this word swap makes it feel like less of a requirement or an obligation and instead frames it as an opportunity or a privilege, something that we're grateful for, something we get to do. If you find yourself thinking, I'm exhausted, you could rephrase it to, I'm pushing my limits. This reframes fatigue as a sign of growth and progress and not just a measure of how tired you are or how ready you are to quit. Some more of these examples include things like, instead of considering a difficult leg of the race as an obstacle, we tried to look at the race ramp by ramp, thinking of each ramp as a stepping stone on the way to finishing the race. That whole idea of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. This reframes challenging times or hardships as a necessary part of any journey. So one thing this concept does in racing and in life is that as you look back on the stages and tasks that you successfully made it through, you develop confidence and pride knowing that you conquered some pretty hard stuff. And this works when you're writing a term paper in college or any hard thing you have to do. You break it up into chunks and you don't look at it as this insurmountable obstacle. You look at it in terms of the baby steps and the tiny pieces that you can conquer or check off along the way. Another example that anyone can try when faced with an especially grueling part of the race or a big life challenge is Instead of thinking something is impossible, this is impossible, tell yourself this is testing my resilience. This change in perspective transforms a hurdle into an opportunity to strengthen your resilience. And I do think this is important in the context of the MR340 because I think that pretty much everyone who takes on this challenge, who starts this race, considers themselves a pretty gritty, resilient person, someone who knows how to stick to things and get things done. And so thinking of it as testing your resilience and knowing that that's a skill that you can develop makes sense to me. And this one is really big for me. Throughout training, we faced a lot of hard. The race was hard. Learning everything from picking up my boat, selecting paddles, learning how to load my kayak. Everything was a challenge every step of the way. There were a lot of challenges that I needed to face head on and figure out the workaround. I like to think about what we think of as hard and what we think of as failure. Some people had to quit the race before the race was called. Somehow in our lifetime, we've been programmed to think of quitting as failure. But the only way you fail is if you don't use that information to learn and grow. So instead of dwelling on the thought, I failed, I really think it would be helpful if we could all pivot and use the phrase, I've learned. This switches the focus from the negative aspect of failure to the learning opportunity that it presents. Though we've been taught to view failure negatively, it's actually a stepping stone towards success. When we encounter setbacks or fall short of our goals, we are presented with an opportunity to evaluate our methods, reassess our strategies, and make necessary adjustments. And we did this a lot in our training. After each one of our big group paddles, we would ask each other questions like, what did you learn? What would you change? What would you do differently next time? And by taking this approach, we reinforced that the entire process was about slowly getting better 
and improving our skills. That concept of just get 1% better day after day after day and the compound effect of that will result in success. In the context of the MR340, this might come into play if a paddler failed to maintain a certain pace or failed to reach a planned checkpoint at the expected time. And yes, not meeting a checkpoint is crushing and heartbreaking. It's not what any of us wants as racers. But rather than perceiving this as a failure, a paddler could reflect on the factors that contributed to this outcome. Perhaps it really was a lack of training or improper nutrition or unrealistic planning. Or maybe it was something like the weather or a barge or some sort of external factor that was completely out of the paddler's control. This self-reflection can lead to valuable insights and actions like revising the training plan for the following year, adding or subtracting from your gear list, changing around your plans, altering your ground crew plans, reevaluating your dietary choices, or setting different benchmarks and goals for where you'll sleep and rest throughout the entire race. Another one that really helped me throughout training and the race was remembering to focus on the journey and not just the finish line. During the race, I tried to remind myself to notice and appreciate the big glowing moon with wisps of clouds covering it, or the colors in the sky, or the lights on the boats at night that made me feel like we are part of this Disney fairy tale, all the sparkling lights on the water. As I close out this episode, I want to remind you that mindset is a critical piece of finishing the MR340. The words we choose not only describe our experiences, they shape them. So choose words that inspire strength, resilience, and a positive perspective. This is something that you can train now. You don't need to wait until next year. And in doing so, you'll not only enhance your performance in the MR340 for 2024 and beyond, but you'll also equip yourself with a powerful tool to tackle life's many challenges. In the next episode, I am going to talk about recovery, rejuvenation, and getting back to social connections and other activities that we love. Endurance athletes often struggle with the concept of downtime, seeing it as a halt in progress rather than the opportunity for growth and rejuvenation. The mindset that makes us great endurance athletes can also work against us when the urge to keep pushing is fueled by a mindset that associates rest with weakness or lack of dedication. So I want to dig into that a little bit next week. Until next time, wherever life takes you, make it an epic adventure.